Hello students, welcome to my channel Champions Learn and Grow. So today we will learn about the nutrition in plants that is chapter 1 of class 7. This is the part 2 of the chapter. So students, you must have seen algae all around yourself, some green slimy patches in ponds or stagnant water. These are known as algae. But why algae is green in color? These are green in color because these also contain chlorophyll which gives them the green color and like plants these also prepare their food with the help of photosynthesis as they also contain chlorophyll so that is why algae is green in color so students do you know there are certain plants which lack chlorophyll they cannot prepare their food and do not perform photosynthesis they depend on the food produced by other plants and they use Heterotropic mode of nutrition. In the part 1, we have discussed about autotropic mode of nutrition. And now we will see how plants show heterotropic mode of nutrition. And what are the different plants that show this type of nutrition. Now, first of all, we will study what is heterotropic nutrition. The organisms which do not prepare their food themselves. They depend on the plants for their food. So, such organisms are called as heterotrophs. For example, animals and few plants so there are certain plants which show heterotrophic mode of nutrition these are parasitic plants insectivorous plants and saprotrophic plants so let's study one by one about them now what are parasitic plants these plants generally lack chlorophyll so these derive ready-made food from the host plant the example is cascuta which is normally called as amber plane so this plant basically climbs on the host plant and derives all the nutrients from the host. The host plant is the plant on which it climbs and from which it derives nutrition. Since these plants obtain nutrients from the host plants, that is why they are called as parasitic plants. This cascuta umber will acts as a parasite on the tree and derives all its nutrients. So this is one of the mode of heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Now students, have you wondered about plants that eat insects? Yes, there are certain plants that it eats insects. These are the insectivorous plants. So what are those? Pitcher plant is one of the example of the insectivorous plants. These plants generally eat insects. You can see in the picture, this pitcher plant, the leaf of the plant is modified in the shape of pitcher. And the apex of the leaf forms a lid and it can open and close the mouth the pitcher inside the pitcher there are hair which are directed downwards so when insects lands in the pitcher you can see the lid closes and the insects trapped insects gets entangled into the hair and then the insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted inside the pitcher so this is how the pitcher plant eats insects but why these uh, plants eat insects because these plants are mainly grown in, uh, they grow in nitrogen deficient soils. So, in order to overcome the deficiency of nitrogen, they eat insects. Now, we will learn about what are saprotrophs. The mode of nutrition in which organisms take in nutrients in solution from the dead and decaying matter are called as saprotrophic nutrition. And the plants which use saprotrophic mode of nutrition are known as saprotrophs. For example, mushroom and fungus are the saprotrophs. They show saprotrophic mode of nutrition. You must have seen sometimes bread uh, in your fridge. There is some green patches or some uh, white uh, cloudy mass is there. These are the fungus. And they show heterotrophic mode of nutrition. They secrete digestive juices on the dead and decaying matter. And they convert it into solution. And then they absorb nutrients from it. So this mode of nutrition is called as saprotrophic mode of nutrition nutrition so fungus and mushrooms are the saprotrophs till now students we have learned about various heterotrophic mode of nutrition now we will learn about symbiotic relationships some organisms live together and share shelter and nutrients with each other these are known as symbiotic relationships for example some fungus lives in the roots of the trees and the tree provides this is a picture tree provides various nutrients to the fungus and the fungus in turn 
helps the plant to take up water and minerals from the soil. This association is very important for the tree. For example, this mycorrhizal fungus helps the plants in the roots and helps them to provide nutrients to the tree. Another symbiotic association is lichens. That is the association between the fungus and the algae. In this, algae generally contains chlorophyll and perform photosynthesis and prepares food for the fungi and in return, fungus provides shelter and minerals water to the algae. So, this is the symbiotic association between various organisms which provide shelter, food to each other and help each other in surviving. Now students, we have learned in part 1 that the product of photosynthesis is carbohydrates. Plants synthesize generally carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis and carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These are used to synthesize other components of food such as fats and proteins. But proteins are nitrogen substances that contain nitrogen. So how from where plant obtain nitrogen? Let's see. Nitrogen, as we already know, it is present in the air in gaseous form. It is about 78% present in the environment. But plants cannot absorb nitrogen in this form. So, soil generally contains some bacteria known as rhizobium that lives in the root nodules of the leguminous plants. So, these bacteria convert the gaseous nitrogen into a usable form and release into the soil. And then these soluble forms are absorbed by the plants. So, by this plants fulfill the requirement of nitrogen and make various fats and proteins from this nitrogen. Students, if the plant will continuously absorb nutrients from the soil, so soil will become deficient in nutrients. So in order to retain its nutrient value, farmers generally add fertilizers and manures to the soil to retain its nutrients. The manures, organic manures and fertilizers are added in the soil as they provide nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus to the soil. So with this, soil gets replenished in the nutrients. So with this, we end the part 2 of our chapter that is nutrition in plants. So, so if you like my video, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.